We got some fruit that was on sale, so we're making a fruit sale mead. So stick around for that recipe coming up right after this. Hey everybody and welcome to another episode of Meeting of the Minds. I'm Dave. And I'm Krista. And uh, you know, that's what we're here to do. We're here to make a mead. What we got here, some fruit we got on sale. So we decided, you know what, let's throw it in. Now, here's what we got. So what we acquired here was roughly four Granny Smith apples. Mm -hmm. Now these came out of uh, a large conglomeration of apples. So if you walk in, sometimes they'll have some uglier fruit that they'll throw into a big bag and sell, you to, uh, sell it to you super cheap. Yeah. That's where these Granny Smiths come from. They didn't look great. But after I sliced them up and froze them and now they're thawing, they look worse, but they'll taste <laughs> fine. We also have some fresh strawberries here that we got cut up, froze and unfroze now. Those are going in as well. Here's our fermenter. It's three gallon, uh, large, wide, not large, but a wide mouth fur monster. And we're gonna be using the made for this specific occasion bag. No fermentation weights, because again, whatever, you do you, I don't care, they don't work. Right. So, we're going to take these sale fruits and this regularly priced honey and throw it in there and see what we get. <laughs> now, the honey we're using is clover honey because I wanted to pick something neutral that wasn't um, going to be too flowery, mm -hmm. not going to be too woody like the mesquite or bring us anything that would overpower the apples or the strawberries. So let's start putting our fermenter together and get everything underway. Well, the cool now, thing yeah, you're ab probably about, about to say this. this is that this fur monster has a spigot on it. So we can rack it um, from the spigot with a tube instead of the whole siphon and stuff. With minimal ease transfer, but I don't know. The more I use this versus the one without it, it, it seems like six to one half a dozen of the other because you got to tip this to get the last little bit of liquid out if you're going to yeah. be greedy. You know, I'd love to hear how you feel about it, but I don't feel like I'm necessarily gaining or losing much one way over the other. Yeah. It's a nice option to have. Some manufacturers will do this solid, but on the tap here, it'll say on and off. The one you can see is the one it is, so don't get confused. If you see off, it's definitely off. It's not like, oh, if I turn it on, will it go on then? No, if it says on, it's on. Don't ruin your floors. <laughs> All right. <sighs> so. The bag. The bag, right? I'm not a huge fan of bags, but whatever. When you go to the brew store, you got to cut corners and save money somehow. And jars are expensive. Another thing I'm not keen on about the bags is with a jar, Here's the thing, you know, I like to complain about a lot of stuff and about shaking and oxygenating. I go, oh, why bother? But the truth of the matter is, I know that I'm built, or I have that built in typically, because when we're using it from a jar or a jug or whatever, we're shaking it like an insane amount, typically a couple of times of cycles to get all the honey out of there. So I'm just doing it in a smaller thing versus having to do this. But since we're doing this, I don't have that luxury, so we're gonna have to use the giant paddle. The paddle. And like with the bag, we can't, or with unlike the bag, we can get all the honey out of a jar, can't necessarily get every last bit of the honey out of this bag. Yeah, there needs to be like one of those big 90s toothpaste squeezers to get all oh, the... Yeah. So just every time we use the bag, I feel like, ugh. If I'd have thought ahead, I'd hang like a clothesline and just have a, a little pin hold this and just let it go overnight. But <laughs> you guys don't have that kind of time and neither do we. Oh man, I'm just gonna give this a few more squeezes then we'll be on our way because you guys don't want to see me here wringing out a bag for the rest <laughs> of your life and mine. All right, we'll call that good. Since we're gonna be adding fruit, right. I'm not worried about the sugar lost here even though I'm just a little bit. So hypothetically, there's our three pounds of honey. Now we're gonna be watering with this whole gallon. Cause if we were in a one gallon fermenter, maybe I'd water two a gallon. Mm -hmm. I don't wanna stop where I think it is. 
I'm not worried about the ABV being super high or super low. We're just doing it. We're just doing it, guys. I mean, if you have a specific gravity, you could add more honey later. Like if I want to do it, I can go crazy, but yeah, I'm not crazy. Now, if that ain't oxygen, I don't know what is. <laughs> Here goes the paddle. I will say that as you dive deeper into this, you start using different honeys from different trees and different flowers exclusively, you'll start to notice the like the subtle but different colors of each like because yeah. to the untrained eye the orange blossom might look a lot like the clover we use but i think in solution here you can see the color really comes out in the orange blossom it would be much paler and then obviously the mesquite it goes super dark mm -hmm. but there's also not a whole lot of variety in the the floral notes or whatever because it's just going to be clover so it's just that regular old honey smell with basically nothing else behind it right but that's why i wanted it because i wanted to sort of keep the strawberries and the apples true and they're probably going to bring a little tartness to it I feel like that's close. I might do more later. We'll see what happens. There's our must. So now let's get our yeast nutrient and our nutritional yeast yeah. into it. <laughs> so full disclosure, I went and got a little bit of Fermade O because it's, you know, everybody's raving about it. So I got some, I read the uh, ingredients and correct me if I'm wrong, but is it just ground up yeast? Cause I'm looking at it, here it is, I bought it, and it's like, oh, it's a blend of inactive yeast. Did... That's what nutritional yeast is. I th well, that's the thing, maybe there's something I'm missing here, but I feel like I read that label a lot because I really wanted to know what was in it and why it may everybody thinks it's so great versus Fermade K or Fermax or any of that stuff. If I'm missing something, can someone please let me know? Cause the directions just make me feel like we're already doing that yeah i don't know what's in this though i forgot to read the directions okay. not the directions but the ingredients i mean it smells like nitrogen if you know what that smells like so we're doing a teaspoon of each of those bingo all right i'll give another little swirl here all right so now that's all mixed in now is probably the best time to take a gravity reading. But here's the thing. If you want to get super technical or as close as possible, what we should probably do is put our sanitized bag in, throw the fruit in, let all the juice that's leached out into the must and get a more accurate reading. I don't think it's going to change a whole bunch, but since I don't want to take two readings, let's do that. So <laughs> It'll just make it easier. I don't know how much is going to fit in this bag, but because again, we got four of these Granny Smith green apples. I'll let you do those. I'll get these strawberries going. Mmm. They're so mushy. Yeah, yeah, these were sliced pretty thin, and then we, uh, froze them intentionally to make them pretty <laughs> sloppy. <laughs> and all shook out. Mm -hmm. All I can smell is the honey. I should have smelled it earlier. <laughs> they smelled like apples. Now this kind of feels a little, um, I want to say like a 90s flavor combination, like 
green apple and strawberry, but I was gonna think like green apple, not green apple, like kiwi and strawberry. That、mm. might be a nice like '90s fruit punch throwback. Yeah. And we've got so much fruit in here. This is a disaster. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you guys see what's going on here, right? It's a problem. So, what do we do? Do we pivot? Throw some more honey in here of a different variety, because that's all I have but clover,、mm -hmm. to make sure this all gets wet, or what? Because we can't leave it like this. I refuse to leave six inches of fruit just <laughs> hanging out, not being exploited. I'm not worried because the CO2 curtain will sort of be protecting them from stuff. But that sucks to lose so much. Yeah. Dang. All right. Yeah, we're gonna have to pivot. Which、mm, maybe it'll be okay. Because here's the thing: we've got two pounds ready to go. Because everything else is either bigger or I don't want to use it、yeah. for this. We got two pounds of wildflower.、Uh, Whoops. Okay. What if? No, this is just speaking off the cuff, and we can. We have some apple juice. My heart wasn't set on a sizer, but I guess that would be. I mean, here's the thing: we're off the rails. We're in uncharted territory because this is not. And here's the thing.、Mm, before we even started, I was like, I don't have any brew bags save for this one, and this one is always dicey because of the. Here, you see why? Yes. I thought, well, maybe I'll just throw the fruit in. Without a bag, that's always a hassle. This is a hassle as well. Dang it! Yeah, we're gonna put some apple juice in here. I guess it's gonna be easier. So what we have here is some Martinelli's apple juice we used on a、uh, different project. Didn't use it all, obviously, and now it's gonna go in here. So retooling from the ground up. I'm gonna throw the juice in there first. Let's get a gravity reading, see where it's at, and then we'll think about adding the honey to where it should be. But I at least want to get enough of this in there that it's going to cover that fruit up. Ah,、oh, you see that when God fills a bag, He squeezes an apple. <laughs> All right, we're still going to be a little out of the liquid, but that is typical for this bag, and plus it's going to float up anyway, so I'm not going to、right. sweat it any further. That being said, let me give it a little bit of a mix here, and then we'll take a little gravity reading. See where we're gonna be at, because I'd like to be at least 10%, if not like 12 or above. Move this stupid slip sock out of the way, and gently drop this very new hydrometer <laughs> into a very old graduated cylinder. There we go. Remember to sanitize your stuff and star sand. If you see any bubbles that aren't from me beating the must up, it's from that. Don't <laughs> fear them. Okay, it doesn't like you know. You see how much stick is out. It doesn't look terrible, and maybe we'll just call it okay. Because we're at 1.070, which I think will probably put us at around 10 percent ish. Yeah, I think so. Nine and eleven, we'll call it. So、eh, I was, you know, usually I like to shoot for hundred points of gravity because it's a nice round number. But also, with the fruit, it, it could be right. There'll be a little bit of sugars in there, but I don't think we're gonna see a huge because, you know, how much is gonna get extracted, how much are available.、Mm. These, I was eating some of these strawberries earlier, and they didn't seem particularly sweet. So I. You know we're we're in、uh, sort of uncharted waters. However, that base line of seventy points is good enough for me. Now, since we are using apples, and now we're doubling down with apple juice.、Yeah. Um, here's the thing. Let me tell you a quick story about cuvee. Yeah. So we go to the brew store. And here's how you need to approach people's opinions and recommendations.、We、go to the brew store. But three or four trips back. Find a bunch of yeast. Dude behind the counter, super nice dude. He goes, "Whoa, guess what? Everybody who's making cider is using cuvee." And I go, "Whoa, apples, cuvee. We started using cuvee for apples." Most recently, same dude, same happy-go-lucky look in his eye. He goes, "You know what? Everybody's using it for ciders. Premier Blanc. 
Cote de Blanc. No, Cote de Blanc? Yes. Yeah, pr not Premier, not the yellow one. Cote de Blanc. Cote de Blanc. Cote de Blanc. Oh, really? Both or <laughs> what? Did they suddenly switch? Right, so and here's the thing. I've used both Blanc and Cuvée. You may be seeing, we may even use it up both on this channel with apples. They both work fine is what I'm getting at. Now, maybe he mistakenly recommended Cuvée for apples and I just found that it really worked. Don't know. Moral of the story is, you know, were they right or were they wrong? I don't know. <laughs> What was best for apples for you? And because I could have had the exact opposite experience, right? Oh, I actually tried Cuvée and it sucked. Yeah, right. Didn't, it was fine. But we're going to throw about a half pack in here. Meh, meh, there. Me roughly. So, that's it. It's not too outlandish. I was, you know... Strawberries and apples shouldn't be too wild. However, I don't think we've ever done a combo like this before. We've never used Granny Smith apples before. Right, and so that's another weird thing that is, you know, my rule of green things. This may or may not be, you know what I mean? <laughs> I love Granny Smith apples. They're my favorite apple. I think it'll be okay. We've been focusing a lot of our recent experience, uh, or rather experiments, around what works good with apples because the Lucy Roses and the Cosmic Crisps we've been using have been dynamite. Yeah. And we accidentally stumbled into, you know, because you get stupid, you run out of containers, and you go, well, let's just throw it anywhere. So I had a jar of apple, Ambrosia Gold Apple Oleo Saccharum. Like, oh, we'll get this much blueberry left. What do we do with it? I say, throw it in there. I don't care. It'll, whatever. We'll drink it later. Awesome. Total by accident. Apples so and blueberries just sings. But those were ambrosia golds, and these are going to be tart. This might end up being like a rhubarb pie, I feel, because mm. of all the sourness. Maybe. But we'll see. So, yeah, let me throw the lid on this. We're going to throw this in the brew closet. And in between 10 and 15 days, if I forget or whatever, however the schedule works out, we're going to pull this out of here so you can see all the colors are going to be leached out of those strawberries. Yeah. And we'll see also how it affects the liquid. So uh, we'll see you in just a few moments after this has been through some fermentation. Okay, so it's been 13 days with the strawberries and the green apple in suspension and during the whole thing i kept making sure i shook it and i would get in there and sort of make the bag go in it uh, i'm pretty sure it went okay it looks pretty good it's clearing relatively well so now the next step is to get it into this and this or one of those and this i don't know how much we're going to extract it's probably going to be closer to the two gallons but let's get to racking. All right, we went as far as we could, and that was almost perfect, almost. Okay, so we got pretty close to two gallons. I probably could have pushed a little more. We were getting into that lees and yeah. The danger zone. Totally fine. This one will just take a little bit longer to clear. This was the first one. I mean, it's negligible, but we're gonna take a reading and see where we're at, because the airlock has been pretty stagnant for a while. Yeah, and I mean, for strawberry and apple, I feel like in 13 days, like this looks really good, clear, clarity-wise. Obviously, it's not clear, clear, but. Right, I mean, relatively, it didn't go crazy. Did we put pectic enzyme in this or nope. no? Okay. We thought about it and then decided against it. I think that might have been for the best because everything looks pretty much intact. Yeah. Okay. Any guesses? Here we go. Ooh. I'm going to guess 1.000. Mm, we're like 0.999 or 0.998. We're somewhere in there, but close enough. So that's like 72. Points of gravity we lost. Yeah. We started at 1.070. Oh, 
Oh, so here's the thing, like young strawberry ferments have a weird smell and flavor. Yeah. So I'm going to advise against tasting it. I don't think we're going to do that here. When we were racking it and I like the smell from going from that to the bottles, I was like, yeah, I don't know if I want to taste that. <laughs> Strawberries always bring a weird, a weird funk that is all their own. It ages out eventually, but while it's there, it's like, it's part of the same principle that leeches all the color out, leaves them mm. like these gray blobs. Yeah. But almost like a little bready or a little too... Well, that's like sometimes we've made strawberry stuff that had an aftertaste of like popcorn-y, yeastiness, which is probably kind of what that smells like. Yeah, a little bit. Not as bad as like the first few ones, because this doesn't have as as much strawberry as we've used in other recipes. Right. When we go heavy on the strawberry, it is big time there. Yeah. But yeah, it's totally fine. It went, uh, what do we got? Okay, so what are we sitting at ABV wise? We are sitting at 9.72%. So it's like a... Sizer. It's okay. It's, yeah, what are we... Hmm. we Three used... pounds of honey. Why was the... It was 0 0.070. Because, well, you know, we didn't count for the sugars and the... Right, but three... Oh, yeah. Oh, right, because we had to... I forgot we had to supplement this with the cider. Or the apple juice, I mean. This was... Oh, I totally forgot about that. Oh, we yeah. We had to add the, the apple juice, the Martinelli's apple juice, to make sure the bag stayed wet. Ah, yeah. that's why Here's the what we did. so low. And we didn't record it. Yes, we added half a gallon of Martinelli's apple juice. I think we did record that, right? Maybe we did. You did that if we did. I'm pretty sure we did because I had to go, oh, no. Yeah, so the, the Martinelli's is what dropped the ABV or the, the, the um, gravity and thereby the ABV as well. Eh, well, whatever. So it's probably wrong. We no, prob it's probably right. That's probably what we, it was probably... It would have been higher if it had stayed at a gallon of water, but we had mm. to supplement to keep that fruit. Huh. This is a weird one, guys. Well, anyway, I'm going to put this back in here. We're going to put some airlocks on these and uh, you know, take it from there. All they need is time. We'll mm. see what they do to clear up and so on and continue on. All right, so here we are in the future. Mm -hmm. you, you, know, you saw us put it in the bucket. We didn't really record any of the other stuff because mostly forgot. Yeah. We have so many things going. But, you know, whatever. Went from a bucket into these things. So, as you may or may not remember, I didn't. We use clover honey to put... Yeah, you probably just saw that. Anyway, so we're going to get this, you know, moving. We let it sit on the fruit, the apples and the strawberries, for about 17 days? 13, 13 days. days? 13 days. I usually think about 10 to 15, so we're right there in the sweet spot. Now, yeah, you guys know me and green apples. There's strawberry in here too, so let's do a reading, see what we got, and take a test of our taste variety. I don't know where my baster is. Found it. <laughs> All right. I love green apple. But I'm very excited that he, uh, I wouldn't say allowed. I mean, because I don't care. And that's the thing, I'm not going to drink this stuff. Like, it's totally fine, whatever you want to make. And then, you know, this stuff. Well, and he might like it. You don't know. We don't know. We don't. But we pretty much fall on opposite sides of the fence. Like, the methaglin side, she takes apples of the green variety and other such things. The clarity is really nice. It is nice. I'm surprised at the color. I thought that the strawberries would have made it a little more rosé-ish. Mm. But it is like, it. if you didn't know any better, you'd probably just think this is a traditional. Yeah. All right, so let's pop it down and see what we're looking at. Barely floating. <laughs> okay, so we're like... 0.992. Oh. So we gotta do some math. Yeah, more math than we did before, because spoiler alert, we took a reading when we did this. 
it was 0.998. Yeah, it's gone down to 0. 0.992. So. So it went, you know, there you go. It ate a little more of the sugars or something. Be, this will be the ABV over here. Whoa. I, It'll earlier, be over 10%. Yeah, well, maybe, right? I mean, six points. Whatever, so, was, we had it at 9.72, so maybe it'll be close. Let's see what this tastes like. Be right back. All right, with tiny taster at hand, we're ready to see what this is. I love how clear it is. I, I don't know. I just can't get over how clear it is for being like apples, like real apples, regular strawberries, yeah. apple juice. I mean, and personally, in our experience, we've had trouble with strawberries clearing. Yeah. Maybe it was the acid of the apple or something that, because these are all Granny Smiths, right? Yes. We had four yeah. Granny Smiths. So we got like big bushels of apples like there were seconds at the grocery store and of course people are getting rid of the granny smith that's where they all went into this thing it smells good yeah it's a little hmm. it smells like strawberries to me yeah i was gonna say the strawberry is kind of hidden but it sort of sneaks up on you yeah. there in the background it is incredibly clear yeah It's not bad. Yeah. I don't think it's great. I like it. You it, Like, from the first time we tested it, taste tested it, because spoiler alert, we did that too. Yeah. When it was 9.998, the apple was so much more pronounced, and it was so much less enjoyable. This, this where it stands now, it smells like a strawberry fruit snack. But yeah. it tastes like a watery nothing a little bit. It to me it tastes more like strawberry than apple. Mm -hmm. I think it's good. I think it's a good mix because if we when we made like just strawberry ones, you get that weird. We have gotten that weird popcorny aftertaste, and y'all don't get that with this. It's like popcorn or foot. They're like strawberries are difficult to deal with. Maybe or maybe I'm just ham fisted with them. But you know, since you can see the bottles here, we obviously planned on. Because I, I, I personally got these ready because I know Krista likes it dry. And I would say this needs tons of sugar. I was waiting for him to be like, you know, what I think would make this better is if we added well, some like, more honey Hello, it. it's 0. .992. And there's nothing about it. Like it's, so, like, it's so clear because there's nothing in it. It's pretty insubstantial. Like for, like 10%. If, it, if it's not going to have any body, like there's no legs to it, it better have something that gives you a kick in the back of the throat. This doesn't have that. So I'm saying it would need a little sweetness, but it's yours. You know, so that's not, if, if you think this is good, I, I, I'm inclined to, you know, let it stand. Because I'm not, I, this isn't something I'd be like, oh boy, what's that? Uh, realistically, if you wanted to, we could do an experiment and we can bottle one and sweeten another. I like it the way it is. Then we'll just keep it the way it is. Because that's the thing. I, there's, even if you made it sweeter and I was like, oh, now it's sweet and it's still something I wouldn't reach for. If you like it, then you should keep it the way that you I like, like it. it. And it may be, you know, bland to some or like... Yeah, it doesn't really have legs. But it's, if it's cold, I would have this yeah, like, on like a hot summer day. Yeah, that's the thing. It, it, it serves a purpose. I can, you know, like you were saying, like this is a summertime drink and a For barbecue. Sure. It's not super high ABV. It's, it's not going to like stick to the back of your throat or make no. you thirstier on a hot day. Yeah, it's light enough to have something heavy for food with it. Like yeah, a like burger. Yeah, like burgers or ribs and you had just like a nice cold chilled glass of this somewhere totally. Yeah. That's totally fine. I, I think... even think I would like put some in the big bottles and then have some in the smaller bottles because you could just drink it. Like, because it's such a low, not such I a know. low. 10% drinking out of the bottle feels a little, oh, yeah, little, little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe but, you're right. <laughs> but whatever, let's get this into the bottles. And uh, yeah, you've seen that before, but we're going to, you know, we're going to do it again. Yeah.
And there you have it. A delightful, pretty light strawberry, easy on the apple. And that's what I'm so surprised about, too, yeah. now that we're really diving into it. The smell of the apple is there, but like the acidity has sort of dissolved away to a palatable level. I would make this again. Like there's nothing that I would even really change unless we made it again to add sweetness to see just how much it brings out. I'm just, I would be worried that it would bring out more of the apple flavor adding sweetness. It may or may not, but like that, that should be your thing, right? Like the green apple was the whole reason for the season. I mean, it's there. I can taste the green apple. There yeah. is, it's heavier strawberry, but it still has a nice, you know, the green apple is there. Like, yeah, I, I'm glad we used clover honey because the smell of the, that apple-y, whatever it is, it's like a weirdness that's not, it's not apple and it's not normal, but it comes with fermentation. Mm -hmm. But whatever, totally fine. Yeah, this wasn't my idea. I'm not a green apple fan. If it were up to me, I would change it utterly, but I mean, totally fine. <laughs> if you want to make it like that, you know what I mean? Do it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So that's that. Uh, something light for summer. You know, depending on when you're watching this, it could be coming up for us. It'll it's be here. soon. So <laughs> give it a shot. And uh, you know, we'll see you on the next episode of Meeting of the Minds. Bye. Yeah, a calculator. Just put it right there. Like, boop, boop, boop. We're going to tight. Uh, the one that spits out the... Yeah, the tape. <laughs>